It was called fringe, foolish, and debunked. But now, people are finally admitting the coronavirus could have come from a lab. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by CuriosityStream. It's great for people like you who love watching videos and learning cool stuff. CuriosityStream has a huge selection of documentaries and nonfiction TV shows. I'll show you more at the end. So, have you ever talked about something that's kind of controversial and people call you crazy and then it turns out you were right all along? Sorry, Galileo, I guess the Earth does go around the sun. A year and a half after the initial virus outbreak in Wuhan, in December 2019, almost 3 million people around the world have died of COVID-19. I've been calling it the CCP virus because the Chinese Communist Party's cover-up allowed it to spread. In response to the CCP virus, government lockdowns have crippled economies around the world. And now, the media would like you to know that the Wuhan lab leak theory is suddenly credible. The theory is that the CCP virus may have come from an accidental lab leak from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. That theory has been discussed since the beginning of the outbreak, but it was for the most part dismissed as a conspiracy theory. If you talked about the idea of a lab leak, you were lumped in with QAnon supporters who thought that Bill Gates created the coronavirus, which is obviously ridiculous. Bill Gates didn't create the coronavirus. He was too busy hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein. Last February, the predominant theory about the coronavirus was that it came from bats or possibly pangolins before jumping to humans. And this seemed to make sense because that's how other coronaviruses like SARS and MERS first spread to humans. At first, the spread of the CCP virus was supposed to have happened here at the Huanan Seafood Market. It's a wet market in Wuhan where exotic animals were sold. Many of the early cases were traced back to the market. Again, it seemed to make sense because a wet market is how SARS was first spread in China back in 2002. But there were problems with this theory. One, some early cases of COVID-19 occurred in people with no known link to the wet market. Another problem. The wet market didn't sell bats or pangolins. And even a year and a half after the initial outbreak, scientists have not found a bat or pangolin or any other host species infected with the CCP virus. That's unusual. The host species of the original SARS virus was identified within four months of the SARS outbreak, and the host of MERS within nine months. So while the zoonotic theory that it jumped from bats to humans naturally makes sense, there's not really any evidence for it so far. But who needs evidence when you can just leap to conclusions? Follow the science. Then there's the lab leak theory. Again, the theory is not that the CCP virus was created as a bioweapon and unleashed on the world. The lab leak theory is that scientists were experimenting on a bat coronavirus at a lab in Wuhan and it accidentally leaked. To their credit, a handful of scientists and journalists have been pushing all along for an investigation into the lab leak theory. But for the most part, if you talked about the lab leak theory, the media basically treated you like you were this guy. Later in this episode, I'll talk more about how the US mainstream media's dismissive reports basically wrote the Chinese Communist Party's propaganda for them. But first, there's been growing evidence over the past year that makes a lab leak look much more likely. We've been talking about this on China Uncensored for more than a year. And some of the Chinese Communist Party's actions are a bit suspicious. Well, okay, I need to narrow that down. How the party treated this specific lab in Wuhan was suspicious. In January, the Chinese military posted its top epidemiologist to the Wuhan lab. In February, Chinese leader Xi Jinping began talking about biosafety reforms in labs. That's an odd response to a coronavirus that supposedly came from a wet market. And as the US began to investigate the origin of the coronavirus, 
the Communist Party began to heavily censor academic research about the origin of the virus. I mean, science and public health are always best served when communist officials are looking over scientists' work. By the way, YouTube demonetized that episode for portraying harmful and dangerous acts. I can only assume it means that the Communist Party's covering up the origin of a global pandemic is a harmful and dangerous act. Right, YouTube? More after the break. Welcome back. Did you actually see an ad? Last year, the lab leak theory was largely dismissed based on two letters. Not research papers, but letters. Essentially, opinion articles from scientists. The first was published in The Lancet on February 19, 2020, and signed by virologists and other scientists. It says, we stand together to strongly condemn conspiracy theories suggesting that COVID-19 does not have a natural origin. The letter also called for the scientific community to support and stand with the scientists of China. It turns out that letter was written by Dr. Peter Daszak. I've talked about Daszak before because he was also on the World Health Organization team that went to China to investigate the origin of the coronavirus. Of course, the party didn't actually let them investigate, and Daszak didn't complain. But that's another story. Daszak is the president of EcoHealth Alliance, a nonprofit group that, among other things, studies viruses in the wild. In emails, Daszak told other scientists that he wanted this letter to avoid the appearance of a political statement, and that it was just about supporting Chinese scientists who were under serious pressure. Maybe that's what he wanted to do. But by calling the lab leak theory a conspiracy theory, Daszak was making a political statement. Also, Daszak and the EcoHealth Alliance had a massive conflict of interest here. They were funding research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology through U.S. government grants. So if a lab leak did happen there, they'd be in a lot of trouble. But you'd never know that from this Lancet letter, because the authors, including Daszak, declared they had no competing interests. Remember this, it's important later. The second letter was published in Nature Medicine. It said that the author's analyses clearly show that the coronavirus is not a laboratory construct of a purposefully manipulated virus. But it turns out that letter did not clearly show that at all. One of the letter's main arguments was that the CCP virus genome did not show any signs of cutting and pasting. But there are newer methods of manipulating a virus that don't leave any marks, including the no -seam or seamless approaches and something called serial passage. Despite the problems with these two letters, the media used them as the basis for article after article debunking the lab leak theory. But there's actually a lot more evidence now for the lab leak theory than the zoonotic theory. Specifically, evidence shows that it's very possible the Wuhan Institute of Virology was manipulating this virus to make it more infectious to humans. Here's evolutionary biologist Brett Weinstein. But the fact that there is no evidence that it shows up in Wuhan and immediately spreads um, tells us that this virus was well adapted to our cells and well adapted to transmit between individuals. And that is conspicuous. One way you could get there is if somebody, A, had added components to a virus in order to make it transmissible to humans. So the research in question would be research that was interested in discovering what a pandemic in humans of a bat-borne coronavirus would be like so that we could do something about it. Maybe we could prevent it. Maybe we could create a vaccine ahead of time. If you think it sounds insane to take a virus and make it more infectious to humans, don't worry. Virologists do this all the time. They're called gain-of-function experiments. Virologists have recreated the 1918 flu virus, shown how the almost extinct polio virus can be synthesized from its published DNA sequence, and introduced a smallpox gene into a related virus. 
So virologists are using DNA to recreate deadly extinct viruses. It's just like Jurassic Park. Except you can't run away from the velociraptors because the velociraptors are inside you. But was the Wuhan Institute of Virology creating Coronavirus Park? Well, yes. This gain-of-function research, making viruses more infectious to humans, was being done at the Institute by Dr. Shi Jung Lee. She's been called Batwoman for her work on bat coronaviruses. Dr. Sher learned to do this research on bat coronaviruses with Dr. Ralph Barrick at the University of North Carolina. They published this paper back in 2015 on combining parts of a bat coronavirus and a mouse coronavirus. Barrick was one of the inventors of the noceum approach I mentioned earlier. It lets scientists manipulate viruses without leaving a mark. So Dr. Sher likely learned how to do this. Barrick is also one of the scientists who published a letter in Science Magazine this month calling for a complete investigation into the origin of COVID-19, including the lab leak theory. I guess we should follow the science. And here's where Peter Daszak comes in. He's the guy who wrote the letter calling the lab leak a conspiracy theory. As part of EcoHealth Alliance, Daszak applied for research grants from the U.S. government to study bat coronaviruses. Specifically, those grants came from the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. And Daszak subcontracted those grants to Dr. Schur at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. The descriptions of the research grants show that Dr. Schur set out to create novel coronaviruses with the highest possible infectivity for human cells. Here's Peter Daszak talking about the work they were doing with bat coronaviruses back in December 2019. This was before the CCP virus outbreak became public knowledge. We've now found, after you know, six or seven years of doing this, um, over a hundred hmm. new SARS-related coronaviruses, very close to SARS. Well, so I, I think that coronaviruses are pretty good. I mean, you're a virologist, you know all this stuff, but they. You can um, manipulate them in the lab pretty easily. It's yeah. just spike protein drives a lot of what happens with the yeah. coronavirus, uh, zoonotic risk. So you can get the sequence, you can build the protein, and we work with Ralph Barrick at UNC mm -hmm. to do this. Um, insert it into a backbone of another virus right. and do, do some work in the lab. So, you can so that's pretty conclusive evidence that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was doing experiments on bat coronaviruses, the kind that could have led to the CCP virus. It doesn't prove the CCP virus is engineered, but there are several things about the CCP virus's genetic code that are unusual or almost non-existent in natural bat coronaviruses. But these things would make sense for a virus that was spliced together in a lab. I'm not going to talk in detail about spike proteins and furin cleavage sites because this isn't viruses uninfected. But suffice it to say, one of these was so unusual that an eminent virologist called it a smoking gun for the non-natural origin of the virus. So the Wuhan lab was essentially creating a coronavirus park, and the CCP virus could have been one of their velociraptors. But could those velociraptors escape the lab? It actually wouldn't have been that hard. The Wuhan Institute of Virology is a BSL-4 lab. That's biosafety level four. It's the highest level. But it turns out the Wuhan lab had safety issues before. American embassy officials in Beijing made several visits to the research facility and sent two official warnings back to Washington in early 2018 about the lab's inadequate safety measures. And even more concerning, it turns out that a lot of the bat coronavirus research was not being done in the BSL-4 labs, but in the much less strict BSL-2 and 3 level labs. Biosafety level 4 looks like this, basically a full body spacesuit. Biosafety level 2 looks like this. It just requires you to wear a lab coat and gloves, and possibly a face shield or goggles if liquids might splash. Last March, Americans were practically sterilizing their groceries at biosafety level 2. 
for a lab, that doesn't seem like enough protection. And it might not have been. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that three researchers from China's Wuhan Institute of Virology became sick enough in November 2019 that they sought hospital care. That was based on a U.S. intelligence report. That's not completely new information. It's partly based on this fact sheet the Trump administration released back in January. But as more information gets reported, it's clear there needs to be an investigation into the lab leak theory. So why has it taken a year and a half for most mainstream media to take the lab leak theory seriously? I'll tell you after the break. Welcome back. Ever since people started talking about the lab leak theory in January 2020, the mainstream media has treated it like a conspiracy theory. Like I said earlier, one reason was that they believed the flawed Lancet and Nature letters from scientists without looking into them further. Another reason was the media kept conflating the lab leak theory with the accusation the CCP virus was created to be a bioweapon. And a third big reason the media treated the lab leak theory as a conspiracy theory was because of who was saying it. Republicans. Back in February 2020, Senator Tom Cotton said that there needed to be an investigation into the lab leak theory. The New York Times accused him of repeating a fringe theory. The Washington Post called it a conspiracy theory that was already debunked. As time went on, most mainstream media just ignored the story, unless they were trying to further debunk it. Especially after President Trump said this. Have you seen anything at this point that gives you a high degree of confidence that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was the origin of this virus? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And I think that the World Health Organization should be ashamed of themselves because they're like the public relations agency for China. Well, he's not wrong about the World Health Organization. But to the media, suddenly the lab leak theory became President Trump's theory, and they had to debunk it. They claimed experts called it foolish. They said Fauci crushed Trump's theory. Dr. Fauci, by the way, is the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, the government organization that gave Peter Daszak the grants that he then gave to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. But the point is, the lab leak theory became a victim of the mainstream media's culture war against Trump. A former New York Times science writer says he thought the lab leak theory was far right and equated it to Pizzagate and QAnon. That same New York Times writer now grudgingly admits it could be true. But for well over a year, people who talked about the lab leak theory were discredited. In some cases, they were banned from social media it couldn't have worked out better for the Chinese Communist Party. Chinese state-run media didn't even have to spend much energy denying the lab leak theory. The Western media did it for them, and much more effectively, too. All the Global Times had to do was show a screenshot of the New York Times. It's quite disturbing that the mainstream media, because of their own biases, ended up handing the Chinese regime a propaganda coup for so long something that let the party cover up its own responsibility for the CCP virus and continue to lie to the rest of the world. But that might be over soon, because the media have discovered that, hey, this lab leak theory suddenly became credible. Yes, suddenly. And the media is now in full backpedaling mode. They might even start doing some actual reporting on the lab leak theory. You know, investigate something. So what happens now that the lab leak theory is no longer a conspiracy theory? Everyone is calling for an investigation. Some scientists say that even without China's cooperation, Congress should start an investigation in the U.S. And hey, if this global pandemic thing did start with a lab leak in Wuhan, maybe the U.S. government shouldn't fund gain-of-function research in China. Just a thought. But now, this issue is a lot more dangerous for the Chinese Communist Party. They can't rely on Western media to be their propaganda arm anymore. On this topic, at least. 
So I wouldn't be surprised if some Chinese scientists suddenly find the missing animal host for a natural zoonotic transmission of the coronavirus. Like mink. Maybe it's mink. Mink sounds good. Thanks, state-run media. When the Chinese propaganda machine ramps into gear to counter the lab leak theory, the real question is, will the Western media fall for it, or have they learned their lesson? And this episode has been sponsored by CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is a streaming platform with dozens of collections of fascinating TV shows, including award-winning and original programming. For example, Ancient Engineering. There's an episode on how China's most brutal and possibly most insane emperor built the Great Wall of China. And to find workers, he had a brilliant idea. He made more than 200 crimes punishable by forced labor. And if you died building the wall, no problem. A family member would have to take your place. With galaxy brain policies like that, no wonder Mao Zedong idolized him. With CuriosityStream, you can watch that and thousands of other streamable documentaries and nonfiction shows on topics like history, nature, science, food, technology, and travel. So click the link below and use the code China Uncensored to get our special deal. Just $14.99 for the entire year. You can also watch CuriosityStream from your phone, tablet, or computer anywhere, anytime. So click the link below and check it out. I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.